Greetings, friends. There's an earth-shaking comment by Rashi, the famous commentator on Parshas Balak. Okay? I grant every comment by Rashi is earth-shaking, but this one really got to me. I felt the ground shake under me. There's no wisdom or understanding of the world except what comes from the Torah. In Birkas Kohanan, the blessing of the Kohanan, we say, or they say, Ya'ir Hashem Panav Elecha, may Hashem illuminate His countenance for you. There's no illumination in the world except that which emanates from Hashem. If you want to understand what's happening, just look at the Torah. The Pasuk says, Ein Am Levadad Yishkon. In this week's Parsha, behold, it is a nation that will dwell alone and not be reckoned among the nations. These are the words of Bilam. Israel is always isolated. Israel is always singled out and mentioned in disproportion to our size. Israel is always judged on a different standard from every other nation and country in the world. This reminds me of the famous quote from Mark Twain. This is the quote, if the statistics are right, the Jews constitute but 1% of the human race. It suggests a nebulous, dim puff of stardust. Boy, was he a great writer. Lost in the blaze of the Milky Way. Properly, the Jew ought hardly to be heard of. But he is heard of. He's always been heard of. He is as prominent on the planet as any other people. All things are mortal, but the Jew. All other forces pass, but he remains. What is the secret of his immortality? Rashi understands the words of this week's Parsha, quote, they will not be reckoned among the nations to mean, quote, they will not be annihilated with the other nations. He refers to the Navi, the prophet, who says, quote, this is a quote, from Yirmiyahu Hanavi, known as Jeremiah, quote, I will bring annihilation upon all the other nations among whom I have dispersed you, but upon you I will not bring annihilation. The passage in Yirmiyahu describes the birth pangs of Mashiach as worldwide suffering, which has no precedent for that day, this is a quote, will be momentous. There's nothing like it. My book, 2020 Vision, opens with a quote which describes Milchemes Gagu Magog, the war of Gagu Magog, the final war in history. Quote, in the end of days, the children of Ishmael and the children of Asam will clash and the two nations will collide and destroy each other. This refers to the climactic war of history as a battle between the Western nations and the Muslim nations in which the two cultures will destroy each other. Interestingly, I saw a passage in a secular book which quoted Pope John Paul as having said a similar thing. And this is a quote, the real coming conflict in the world is not going to be between the United States and Russia, but rather between Islamic fundamentalism and Christianity. If we look with open eyes, it's not difficult to see that world events are hurtling toward a climax. Our prophets, rabbis, and commentators all describe the birth pangs of Mashiach as a time of awesome events, resembling the downfall of Mitzrayim, ancient Egypt, but on a worldwide scale. We'll all need to be immersed in the protective cocoon of Torah in order to sustain, to try to sustain ourselves emotionally and physically through all these cataclysmic events. But the words of Rashi give us tremendous hope. Rashi is telling us that it will be possible to survive the birth pangs of Mashiach, just as our ancestors survived the downfall of ancient Egypt. 
I'm going to quote from the article commentary on Yirmiyahu, the prophet, quote, the sages teach that the world will undergo horrific travails in the end of days when God transition, transitions its inhabitants to the messianic era, which will be a new kind of existence. The dominance of the nations will end and the Jewish nation will reign supreme. Can we imagine a world like this? When Mashiach comes, the world will have turned upside down or right side up. One can imagine that this will necessitate cataclysmic change. But Rashi is telling us that we are not to be counted with the rest of the nations. If we elevate ourselves and separate from the surrounding culture, we have every reason to hope that Hashem will allow us to behold His return to Zion in compassion in the days of Mashiach. May we see them soon. Good Shabbos.